pulse stretcher. Now why would you want to go and stretch a pulse? Sometimes the little buggers are too short. Consider a GSM command and input. Each input is typically sampled 10 times a second or every 100 milliseconds and therefore any condition on that input, be it active or inactive, needs to be sustained for at least 100 milliseconds for you to be guaranteed that the commander would pick it up. In 99% of applications that's not a problem, uh, but in some applications and one of them would be a kilowatt hour meter, that will not be good enough. This kilowatt hour meter gives out one pulse every watt hour and that pulse is about 10 milliseconds in length and that's way too short for your commander to pick up. So what you will typically do is you'll take your pulse stretcher or take the pulse from your kilowatt hour meter and you'll plug that into the pulse stretcher which would go and neatly stretch that up to about 130 milliseconds and that will plug into the commander and the commander will be hunky dory. For our demonstration today I'm going to connect the pulse stretcher to our demonstration kit where I've got a commander mounted and the first thing you'll see we've got four pins and they match up to the description of an input of a JSON commander. So it's designed to go directly into the input like this so what I'm going to do I'm going to connect it up there very quickly using my screwdriver so now we have the output of the pulse stretcher connected to the input of the GSM commander now on the input of the pulse stretcher that's where our short pulse goes in you'll see there are three pins negative normally closed and normally open now the pulse stretcher expects to see the negative and the normally closed to be normally connected if you want to trigger the pulse stretcher, you will break that connection or you will make a connection between negative and normally open. So in our case, we are going to use this wire which is connected to a switch right here. And this switch is basically just shorting these two wires together. And I've connected it such that it was the switch is shorting the negative and the normally open together. So the moment I switch it on, it will, sh it will trigger the um, pulse stretcher. But at the same time, I've got this wire link here between minus and normally closed because I don't want that condition to trigger the pulse stretcher. So I'm going to connect that right up there. And now on the input of the commander, you'll see there's a little LED at the back of this connector that shows when the output is switching on. So if I trigger the pulse stretcher here by switching the switch, you'll see the the LED switching on for around about 100 and something milliseconds. So if I'm gonna uh, try and do a very very short pulse on the on the switch like like that, you'll you'll see the the output still goes for about 120 milliseconds, and that's the sort of signal we need. So that no matter how short this signal is, that signal will always be 120 milliseconds. Now, obviously, we can trigger it both ways. One way would have been to do what we did now, to, to short these two wires. But the other way to do it would be to disconnect this normally closed. You will see if I disconnect this wire, there's triggering already. You see that's triggering? It's triggering again. So depending on, on what kind of signal you have available, you will decide to either use the normally open or the normally closed input on the pulse stretcher. So there you have it, no mess, no false, short pulses turn into fat ones.